Okay, so as you can see here, this is a 3D model that is created using uh, Drone Deploy, which is a uh, application for creating maps and models using uh, photogrammetry. And photogrammetry, just quickly, is the sort of art and science of making maps and models uh, from still photography, still photos. So in this case, I used a drone, a Mavic Pro, uh, to do a mission to fly over and take a number of photos, uh, which then resulted in this, in this particular model. Um, so as you can see, the model has a bit of detail here, which came out pretty good, I have to say, considering some of the models I've done in the past. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a mural here uh, that's pretty iconic. You can see it kind of from the road. Uh, there's a bunch of graffiti on the edges of the building here. You can kind of look in, kind of pull in close and you see the uh, windows. A little bit of warping here and there. But generally speaking, it's pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. Um, you can kind of see into the windows up here. Yep, see all the graffiti there and just kind of the lines and sort of structural anomaly, anomalies of the, of the uh, structure. Uh, and as we, we can rotate all the way around and see, see the, whole, um, the whole thing, uh, and as you can tell, the lighting is not even, right? So this was done uh, near the end of the day. I'd say probably about four o'clock or so. I think I did this. It was a sunny day, so that uh, means that you know, obviously, one portion of the building is much more illuminated than the rest. And as you can see, as we kind of flip around here, you'll see it's pretty shadowy on the backside. Uh, nonetheless, there's still a good bit of detail that, that came through. So what I did is I ran the app and then I created the Nader photos, which are done by relatively automatically. You just kind of create a, uh, a box around the um, area that you want to uh, capture and it goes ahead and uh, automatically will fly your drone over the, over the uh, subject area like a lawnmower pattern, basically. Uh, and then once you have that, you need to really, to get the detail, to get the side detail here, you need to, to create what are called oblique photos, which um, is essentially the, what I did in this case is just one round of oblique photos. Uh, and what I did, how I did that was just simply manually flying the drone around the model and just took a number of photos um, from the same altitude that I uh, did the uh, did the original photos, the Nader photos, um, but just uh, pointed the camera at uh, 30 or 40 degrees down. So what this allows you to do is capture um, details on the side here that you're not all not able to get from just a straight down shot uh, when doing the, the original native photos. The oblique photos can also be done automatically. You could set up a point of interest in the uh, DJI app, the Go app, uh, as the um, with the center of the model as the point of interest uh, and then set it up so that the uh, drone does an orbit around the, the model here. Uh, and then you can just manually take photos as it goes along the way, or you can just tell it to automatically take photos, you know, let's say once every couple seconds or so. Um, and that's usually enough to, uh, to evenly cover the area in which you need to, to get a good model. This model is being displayed in Sketchfab, which is a 3D model, uh, I guess, manipulation and hosting platform, uh, which Drone Deploy uses for uh, deploying their, or for showing their models in line. Uh, and yeah, you can just kind of like rotate it around on the axis, or, or the at least the um, the y-axis here, and uh, I can flip it around. Since I have a three D model, I could, if I wanted to, bring it into uh, uh, you know to, to CAD programs or other uh, modeling programs and clean this up in some way if I wanted to use it for uh, you know for various purposes. Uh, so something else that I will show you here too, within Sketchfab there are some interesting settings that you can change. So this is sort of the model um, rendered as is or, or rendered naturally, um, but what it can also do is change this shading to a wireframe if I just want to see what the model looks like without the um, shading detail. So I can get, I can actually look and see what the wireframe, the mesh is that you know of the of the model as it was created. In the, you know, you can really sort of see the detail there of, uh, of, of the model as it was created. It's pretty neat. All right, so let's go to the Drone Deploy dashboard and take a look at the photos that were used to take this. So as you can tell, as you can see, there's 140 images that are in this set. So uh, most of them are, the uh, all these that you can see right here are the overhead shots. And I can look at any one of them individually if I like. I'll just go ahead and bring it up and render it. 
And so I can just, uh, I can see what photos were used to make this model. That's just one of the beginning overhead shots. And I can go back, actually scroll through them if I want, one by one. Uh, it's taking a lot for these to load in because they're pretty big. So we'll just exit out of that. But as you can tell, there are a bunch of photos. Here is another set of them. These are again, all the overhead shots. Let's go to the third set. Uh, see, they're mostly overhead shots. And then they start to pick up here. As you can tell, these are the um, the oblique images. And again, those are the, the images that are uh, taken at an angle uh, not straight down, but at an angle to fill in the details <clears throat> of the model. And so these are what uh, ultimately give you the side detail of the model. And as you can tell, pretty decent image. And the trick to getting uh, decent oblique images is to uh, not have the horizon in your shot. So, uh, and as you can see from all these, that's pretty much the case. Anyway, so that's the, all the images that are part of the set. Uh, and what else do we have here? Let's go. Oh, we can look at it uh, as a 2D model on the map. So here is what it looks like uh, with the, the map sort of superimposed on a Google map. So if we come all the way out, we can see the positioning where this was done. And then if I zoom in, as you can tell, the detail here is a little bit different around where the map is, including the shadows too. Um, but this part is the um, is the map that was created, the two D the two D map that was created using the imagery. And you can, can totally tell if you look at the uh, edges here, the detail totally uh, completely changes as we get out of the map I created versus the Google map that's underlying it. The cool thing you can do is if you click this little uh, slider here under images. Um, it'll show all the photos, basically give you a, a visual representation of all the photos that were taken uh, to create this. So if you notice, all the um, yellow images are, um, those are the overhead snapshots that we're taking. And then the, um, the uh, sort of pink circular images are all the ones that were taken during the, the, uh, the orbit. So the, those are the oblique images. Um, so this gives you a sort of a, a, a rough representation of where the images fall on the model. Another cool thing you can do is under annotations and measurements, there's a few tools here. Uh, distance is pretty rad because you can actually uh, use it to find out the distance between uh, any portions of your map. So I'll click here on the front side of the building all the way to the back. And this tells us that it is, oops, I need to click the last uh, point. And it tells us it's 206 feet between these two points there. That's pretty nifty. So that away, and then we can also do the same thing with area. So if I wanted to find out, let's see what the the total uh, area is uh, on in the silo, I can click around it like this, and that tells me that the the area covered is roughly a half an acre. Pretty nifty. All right, so that away. Uh, and then volume as well. Uh, oh, actually, that's a paid feature. Uh, I don't have that. Mm -mm. Uh, and then location. Uh, oh, if I wanted to make notes. Um, and location is uh, used if, if I wanted to make notes, let's say. I could say, uh, you know, let's see right here. Let's say, call that top of top of silo. And then, so it's just kind of a way of annotating the model and putting notes there. So there's also plant health and elevation, which are pretty cool features, but they are paid features. I am using the free account, which is available to everyone. Uh, so I'm not ready to upgrade, uh, but if I were, uh, those would be cool features to use. Um, Probably not specifically in this environment, but you know, certainly other areas like, like quarries or um, areas where you want to really kind of figure out what the elevation is across a, a hole in the ground, or if I'm doing agricultural surveys, plant health is, is certainly good there. So here's a fly through of the actual building uh, taken from the drone. So this is video shot uh, as an orbit using the um, point of interest uh, feature 
again in the GTI drone app. But as you can see, this is what it looks like. Well, that's it for now. If you have any specific questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, also in the notes there, you'll see a link to the model so you can look at it yourself and to the resources under and deploy that I use to create this. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the future.